<laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Peter, and we're here to make progress, not perfection. But on the way to progress, sometimes we have to learn how to properly learn, and that's why we're here. All right, real talk, guys. I see a lot of issues that newer players, as well as intermediates who have already been playing the game when trying to lab against a character, have. They're in practice mode. They've got their frame data open. That's great. And then immediately they go into repeat action, move list, and then they start going down the move list. They're like, okay, one one. Okay, for Asuka, it's a high mid minus seven. Okay, what's next? Okay, next is jab uppercut. Okay, what is this? Oh, this is two one, and it's uh, minus eight, and it's also high mid. Okay, what's after that? And and they go down this move list. And guys, this move list is pretty extensive. It's it's by far not the biggest move list in the game, but it's still got 90 something moves. And if you take out all the generic throws and stuff, you're still gonna be left with, I don't know, 80 something moves. So this is the main issue that a lot of players have and it's labbing a dictionary. And the reason I say it's a dictionary is when you're learning a new language, and Tekken is basically like learning a new language, when you're learning a new language, you don't immediately pick up an encyclopedia or a dictionary, turn to the first page, and then go, okay, I'm going to memorize that first word. Then I'm going to memorize the second word, and then the third, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. No. That would be insane. <laughs> what you would want to do is learn the words that are most commonly spoken. Words like, hello, hi, and phrases like, how are you? Where is the bathroom? Or how much does this cost? And those types of things in Tekken are equivalent to key moves, as well as strings that are most commonly used and seen. So don't just immediately go into the move list when you want to lab against a character and then just start grinding away at this because this is by far one of the most inefficient ways you can possibly try to lab a character. What you should be doing is figuring out for the character that you're labbing against what are the top 15 to 25 moves and the reason I say 15 to 25 is because in any given game that you're playing majority of the time you're only going to see about 15 to 25 moves. If the player is really good, they might use more. If the player is um, not well versed with the character, they may do less. But regardless, 15 to 25 is a rough roundabout estimate. So you don't need to grind your gears and trying to going through all of all the 80 something moves that a character has. The second problem, and it's very much linked to the first one, is players will lab against a character and won't move on from labbing that character until they are 100% sure that they can punish everything that that character has. Guys, Tekken is a fucking hard ass game and it's got a massive roster. This roster right here is absolutely crazy because there's close to 50 characters. I think it's like 49 characters on something Welcome in the game. To the King of Iron Fist this Tournament 7. roster alone Assuming it's 49 characters, if you spent one week labbing against a character, and it's one week is not even that long of a period of time, but let's say you spend one week labbing a character, it would take you close to a year to lab this whole entire roster from beginning to end. And by the time you got to, let's say, the 49th character, and you fully 100% labbed all of these characters, what are the chances that you're going to remember something that you labbed 49 weeks ago chances are you've probably forgotten everything and then you have to restart the process from the very first character that you labbed against so my advice is not to do that figure out the top 15 to 25 moves for a particular character and then once you've gotten that down move on to the next character move on to the next one and then go through little by little all the characters in the game starting with their key moves but 
Then it begs the question, okay, Peter, what are the key moves for these characters? How do I know what the key moves that I should be looking to, to punish or looking to deal with or the strings? Well, I got you covered. I got you covered. There's two fantastic websites that I want to give you as resources in order to begin your labbing journey to help ease the process. The first resource is the Tekken Basic Punishment Library. And what this is, is it has a list of all the characters in the game. And this, by the way, huge shout outs to Apple for compiling all of this with his team. Uh, if he did it with a team and if he did it by himself, huge huge help to the community man. huge huge help this has a list of all the characters in the game and it has i believe the top 15 moves that you will most likely see for each of the characters and matchup tips if any uh, not all of the characters in here you will see with matchup tips uh, for instance bob nothing at the moment um claudio nothing at the moment but for a majority of the cast, you're going to find a little tidbit of matchup tips, and I think you can use this as a way to guide you towards understanding how to fight this character. For instance, let's look at Brian. Brian has a very strong keep out game, so be careful how you approach him. Try dash blocking before committing to a button. Once you learn how to block Snake Edge on reaction, Brian's mix ups isn't scary. All right. This I totally agree with. And for example, the most commonly seen moves uh, while standing one, snake edge, uh, machine gun blow, uh, 441, hatchet kick, um, soccer kick. Yeah, all of this is pretty commonly seen stuff that you should be able to more or less be able to deal with or know how to deal with. This is the first resource. Now, the second resource, and by the way, those of you who are watching, uh, don't worry about trying to copy this down. I'm gonna include a link in the descriptions for both of these websites. So the second website is the Tekken 7 String Cheese, compiled together by Somasana? He has been going through and documenting all the strings in the game. Well, maybe this document doesn't have all the strings, but it has a huge huge number of strings in the game and it lists out uh, the strings if they have different extensions for instance Akuma's 1-1 one, one is high high and then 1-2 which is high mid and it's meant to check bonus who are ducking so with that you can use this as a, another resource to help you lab a particular character if you're just starting off in this journey of labbing characters I would look into these strings, but not to the point of obsession, right? For instance, characters like Alyssa. She has a bunch of strings in here, a bunch of strings. And then Anna as well. Uh, Armor King less so, and Asuka has a bunch of strings. So if you're just starting out with labbing characters, you can take a look at this, but don't get too bogged down by all the strings. You'll need to know them at some point, but not immediately. I wanted to leave this video off on ideas on how to properly practice so that you're not wasting time in practice mode and getting the most out of it. Most everybody knows how to properly record in practice mode, so I'm not going to go over that. But um, for starters, I recorded Asuka's Snake Edge. This is something that quite a few characters have, and if a character does happen to have a Snake Edge, chances are you'll want to learn to block it so that you can properly punish this tends to get thrown out a lot. So be able to duck this on reaction and be able to pull it. Up next, I recorded her 2-3 string. This is her 12 frame punisher. And in the ranks where players don't necessarily know what's minus 12, moves that are 12 frames, 12 frame punishers are tend to be thrown out quite frequently because players are just looking to get some stray hits and in this case it's launch punishable so make sure to properly punish that and right after that i recorded the 2 1 1 plus 2 string ends in a high you have to duck it and these two strings right here asuka's 2 3 and the 2 1 1 plus 2 in this case this is good to pair together because they both start off with a 2 input 
and one has to be stand blocking, the other one has to be ducking. So the punishes are going to be different, obviously. This is going to have to be launch punished, and that has to be ducked. So when you're looking for moves to use in practice mode, make sure to find moves, if any, that kind of complement each other where one's a mid, one's a high that you have to duck, or one's a mid, the other one is a low. Look for that. Uh, something else that I have in here is her back three. And the reason why I included this in there is because this move has a lot of pushback. So it has quite a bit of pushback, and it's very hard to uh, punish with conventional means. So you'll have to know a long range punisher, in which case Armor King has four one, one plus four. And this is a very good punish for it. Uh, other characters may have something else different. Oh, you know what? Armor King also has forward two one. Yeah, he also has that. So find out for your character. There's quite a few characters in the game that do have these pushback moves, moves that have pushback. For instance, Hihachi's uh, Demon Upcut four four two or Paul's Death Fist, Paul's Demo Man. Those types of moves that have quite a bit of pushback. Know what moves that you can possibly punish it with for your character. And last but not least, I recorded a string for Asuka, uh, the back 4, 2, 3. And this again is just another string to know that is pretty commonly thrown out in the lower levels. When you're first getting used to the block punishing aspect of the game, don't immediately just turn on all of these settings here, the repeated actions, because it's, it's going to get really hectic really quickly and it's a very very, very easy way to burn out. Instead, my suggestion is find a particular move, one move that you're having trouble with. Let's say for this example, I'm having trouble blocking Asuka's Snake Edge. So I want to be able to see the animation and then block. I'm not just automatically ducking, right? I see the animation and then I duck. See the animation, then duck. And then I'm including my Punisher in there. So then once I get used to this, then I'm gonna start going in and then adding more moves, right? And before even adding moves, I would just venture to begin practicing them separately, right? Learning to block punish separately. And once you've gotten that down, then you can start combining stuff, right? So you stand block, duck, oops, wrong punish. There we go. So. Start by doing that, and once you get two moves in there, then, you know, turn the third one on, but turn the other two off so you can see this one separately, right? You need to duck here. Oops, too slow. Got the punish. And then you can start turning all of this stuff on. So these are my tips and tricks uh, and ideas on how to properly uh, block punish, and you can always just rotate around with this kind of stuff. As you've become more and more comfortable with a particular move, you can start slowly phasing it out while incorporating new moves in. Thanks for watching guys and joining me on this video. Also, thank you so much patrons for your ever so gracious support. Without you, this would have not have been possible. And if you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. Below in the descriptions as always, I also have my links to my Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon page. See you next time.